मम ज्ञातिविरंद से ज्ञानांजन शलाकया चक्षुर्मिलम तस्म श्री गुरव नम श्री चैतन्य मनोभीष्ट स्थापित मेन भूतले स्वयं गदमीय दुदा स्वापदातिक हरे कृष्ण कर्ण सिंधु दीनबंधु जगतपते गोपेशा गोपिका कांता राधा कांता नमस्ते तप्त कांचन गौरंगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी ऋषुभानुस्ते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री वेद गदाधारा शिव साधि गौर भक्त वृंदा हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा 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 हरे हरे आई एम ऑडिबल आई एम ऑडिबल यस माता जी यस माता जी आज द रिकॉर्डिंग यस्टरडे आई नाउ आई अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट यू आर टॉकिंग अबाउट ओके लेट्स स्टार्ट हरे कृष्ण सो टुडे इज चैप्टर 3 इट्स अ वेरी नाइस चैप्टर देयर आर मेनी चैप्टर्स इन भगवत गीता व्हिच आर इंटररिलेटेड like chapter 3 and chapter 5 sorry and chapter 7 and chapter 9 chapter 14 chapter 17 there are uh, chapters like that okay i see some children have their camera on my request is if you are less than 15 and you are sitting alone without your grandparents or parents or any adult please turn off your cameras so chapter 3 karma yoga yoga of action So yesterday Krishna introduced so many things. So these are our deities, Sri Sri Radha Govinda. Let's pay our obeisances to them before we um, start. So this is what we did yesterday. Uh, the second chapter, uh, the Gita Saran summary of a good Gita. Arjuna gave reason in first chapter, compassion. I'm not going to fight because uh, these are the they are the objects of my compassion. Krishna addressed it by giving him knowledge of the soul. Jnana, we are not the body. Okay, so he is use he is introducing the concept of Jnana Yoga. Then, then Arjuna says, no enjoyment. My my family members will be gone, so there will be no enjoyment. Krishna gives him the concept of Karma Kant. Ah, uh, that whether you will win the war and you will enjoy the early kingdom, or you will lose the war, or soldiers and die on the battlefield and go to the heavenly kingdom so either you win or lose both ways you have enjoyment so karma kant then uh, arjuna says it is a sin to um, kill your own family member fear of sinful activity krishna gives uh, introduces the concept of buddhi yoga buddhi yoga means uh, bhakti yoga the yoga that one does with intelligence devotional activity has no sin on the contrary sultam apya dharmasya trayate mahato bhayat i gave example of vibhishan or uh, lord hanuman or the ma or the rat who dedicated his life to save krishna's lamp no sin and indecision is indecided so krishna says serve the lord with determination vivasatmika buddhi ek ek kurunandana have a vivasatmika buddhi Then Krishna introduced um, Arjuna asked five questions. Krishna answers. Sita Dhir Muni, who is the person whose consciousness is merged in transcendence. In transcendence. Today we are going to look at another uh, reason that Arjuna gave destruction of the family dynasty. Then Krishna is going to say in eighteen to twenty-six words, be a role model to prevent Varna Shankara. So basically, what happened in second chapter is that Krishna introduced so many things. Jnana Yoga, Karma Kant, Buddhi Yoga, Sankhya Yoga, so many things. So Arjuna gets confused. This is what we are going to do today. Because Arjuna is going to begin the chapter by asking question: Should I renounce because I am not the body, I am a soul, or should I act because that's the devotion service? That day come Vada Krishna. And Krishna is going to introduce Nishkam Karma Yoga being greater than Jnana Yoga, Karma Kant to Karma Yoga. Then lead by example by working, and uh, who is the greatest enemy? So I'll come back to this table at the end again. Okay. So when we see something like this, what comes to the mind? Maybe one person can uh, uh, raise their hand. Let's say you have this thing. The other, the other way, that way, this way. What comes to the mind? And so many ways are shown. Prashant, H S, yes, Hare Krishna. What What do you think? Hare Krishna, Vada Ji. हरे कृष्ण माता जी हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण माता जी आई आई इमेजिन दैट दिस दिस वे द ट्वेन द अदर वे आर द रूट्स टू आर द सेम रूट्स बट डिफरेंट रूट्स टू 
different roads and uh, i i also imagine that uh, the roads are like in religion and uh, but the uh, goal is same and uh, uh, all the roads are uh, uh, all the roads are different like uh, different religion follow different like uh, other dharmas and uh, they they will uh, they will uh, go to god or get moksha that is the way thank you how old are you uh, i am i am 12 years okay thank you so much thank you prashant so okay anyone else sapna bajaj mata ji yes mata ji when i show you picture like this what comes to your mind yeah yeah mata ji i get confused Oh yeah, confused. Okay, thank you so much. Yes, so yes, so in so many ways, that this way, that way, that way, where to go, which way should I take? I will also be confused. So that is what is happening. That ekam bada Krishna. So he says, Arjuna says to Krishna, tell me one thing. Ekam bada, tell me one thing. Don't say that. Uh, his confusion is coming from here. And in second chapter, eleven to thirtieth verse. Krishna introduced the concept of Jnana Yoga. That is, I'm not the body, I'm the soul. So Jnana Yoga. So he took Jnana Yoga means that because I'm not the body, I'm the soul. So I don't need to work because soul doesn't have a need to fight because soul can never be killed by any weapon. Soul is just sitting in the body. So he thinks he takes Jnana uh, Yoga to be something like inactivity or inaction. And then Krishna introduces the concept of um, no sin in devotional activity so there he says to arjuna fight because if you perform the fight by my order then there is no sin because you are acting on my behalf so here he is like what to do tell they come vada krishna tell me one thing what do i do yes which child wants to chant this uh after you raise your hand please lower your hands because it gets a little confusing Yes, which child wants to chant these two verses? If no one is, you can raise your hand. Any children in the class? Or I'll chant. No one is raising hand, right? Uh, Kartik Prabhu or Kalavati Mata Ji. No one. No Mata Ji. Nobody. Okay. So Arjuna Uvacha Jayasi Chet Karmanaste Matta Buddhir Janardana Satkim Karmani Ghore Mam Niyo Jasi Keshava. Achuna said, "Oh, Janardana, oh, Keshava, why do you want to engage me in in this ghastly warfare? If you think that intelligence is better than fruity work, so he's asking now. If you if you think that intelligence is better than the fruity work, why should I fight? Because he's thinking intelligence to be like inactivity. Because soul doesn't have a need to act like this. He's thinking like that very appropriately." Then Vema Shri Vema Shri Vena Vyakke Na Buddhi Moha Ya Shish Moha Ya Shiva Me Tadekam Vada Nishchetya Ye Na Shreyo Aham Apnu Apnu Yam So Tadekam Vada Nishchetya Nishchetya means for sure. My intelligence is bewildered by your equivocal instructions. Therefore, please tell me decisively which will be most beneficial for me. So this is again another sign of an intelligent person. Remember yesterday I said that Karpan ne do show pa to then when when Krishna when Arjuna surrenders to Krishna in verse six in second chapter, there it is pointed out by Shri Prabhupad that an intelligent person will always approach authority when they are in problem, and the best authority is the one who can give spiritual knowledge. Again, in this verse three point three, he is again approaching Krishna. Tell me decisively which will be most beneficial for me. So he is asking. He is being vulnerable. Okay, when I show you with due respect to this person in the photograph, with a lot of respect, but I, but what is the idea conveyed? When I show you a picture like this, then what comes to the mind? What 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 is the first thought that crosses one's consciousness? If no one is raising hand, then when maybe one of my co-hosts can answer my question. Hare Krishna, Mata Ji. He just is wearing the um, you know dress of a sadhu, but uh, taking he's not renouncing really anything. Just it's the outer look is the renunciation part. He's smoking. He has a phone, and he's uh, 
effect. I mean, you know, he's still enjoying the material benefits, but giving the impression that he is not. Thank you so much. I think having a phone is not a problem, but yes, thank you so much. So, dress like a sadhu. She used the punchline. So, someone is dressed like a sadhu, but the actions are not like a sadhu. So, one Krishna says to Arjuna that you are telling me that you want to go to the jungle and meditate, right? This is what is happening. Because you don't want to kill your family or you don't want to fight because of this, 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 and this reason. But what are you going to do about your mind, Arjuna? What are you going to do about that? You have a mind. You can, okay, maybe physically restrain yourself from action. But the mind is always going to dwell on the sense objects. So that is real Krishna consciousness. When we not only like stop the activity by active senses, but also the thought is not crossing your consciousness. It's not that, oh, I become a god by meditating. But then what, what am I going to do with my mind? My mind is, when am I going to smoke cigarette? Or, oh, I did so much meditation. Give me a cup of tea. That's not that's not real. That's called Mithya Chara Uchyate. That's what the verse is. Prashant, you can um, unmute and chant this verse. Your hand is raised. You can unmute Prashant. Okay. No, the child wants to, um, Abhinav, are you, so if you're a child, please raise your hand and you can chant. T, Kartik Reddy. Yes, you do it. Hare Krishna Mataji. Karmendriyani Samyamya Ya Aste Manasamaran Indriyartan Vimudatma Mithyarcha sa uchyate. Very Hare nice. Krishna Mataji. Krishna. So, Karmendriyani Samyamya. Ya Aste Manasasmaran. Manasasmaran. What are you going to do with the memory of your mind? Which is the consciousness that's the plans that are sitting in the mind. You may restrain your senses. Indriya Arthan Vimudhatma. Mithyachara Uchyate. So one who restrains the senses of action, but whose mind dwells on sense objects, certainly deludes himself and is called a pretender. So Krishna does not want anyone to become a pretender. Prabhupada uses the word show bottle spiritualism. Prabhupada said, we don't want to make show bottle spiritualists. We need real person. There should be substance attached to one's action. Um, and also Shri Prabhupada gives another example. Let's say, you know, we keep fast on Ekadashi. We don't eat grains on Ekadashi. It's uh, so simple fruit or milk or uh, juice, water, or some people even keep it without water. So strict. Ekadashi fasting. But Prabhupada says there's so many people in the hospital who are not eating because of some medical condition. So does it mean that they are eating, they are keeping Ekadashi? No, because their mind is when, when, when will I eat next? When will I eat next? When will I eat next? So that's not keeping Ekadashi. Ekadashi voluntarily. So voluntarily, we restrain the senses for a higher cause. Because I want to become Krishna conscious. And Krishna wants that. He's saying it. Mithya achara is uchyate. We don't want. Mithya means false. Achara means action. Sadachar, your character. Sa uchyate. Uchyate means called as. That character is called false. Where the senses are sitting the, the mind is sitting with the sense objects, but uh, outside, outside I'm dressed as a saint. But who's better? Krishna is going to say. So this is another example that I may go to a jungle and, um, and uh, you know, try to be self-realized. But what are you going to do about the mind? The mind wants to be attached to so many objects and, and exchange affection. So what are you going to do about that? Krishna um, wants to solve the root of the problem. But Krishna says, this person is better than the one who is Mithyachara. On the other hand, if a sincere person tries to control the active senses by the mind and begins Karma Yoga in Krishna consciousness without attachment, he's by far superior. So Krishna likes someone who is uh, actively engaged in devotional service by, uh, by senses. Why? Why? We will learn this later in this chapter. But I just want you to understand what it's saying. Each word is so important. On the other hand, 
if a sincere person tries to control active senses by the mind so the senses are controlled active senses are controlled by the mind and how is it controlled by beginning karma yoga karma means action yoga means action that one that helps one linking uh, to krishna so yoga two meanings yo plus ka means linking with the higher self so that action which leads one to link with the higher self is better without attachment we are not attached to action also and we are not attached to the result of the action also we are just working for krishna that person is by far superior work work but work in a way that you are going to give your result and action both to krishna that person is better than the person sitting in the jungle and meditating this is uh, king pratap rudra uh, he comes in chitana chaitamrita king pratap rudra was a king uh, and he but he was a devotee of krishna pure devotee he wanted to see chitana mahaprabhu so he sent a word to chitana mahaprabhu that if he can please come and take his darshan mahaprabhu sent a message back saying that no you cannot because you are a king and you are engaged in worldly affairs and i am a sanyasi so it is forbidden i am forbidden to see people who are dealing with worldly things so uh, chit king pratap rudra was a little sad so associates of chitana mahaprabhu gave him an idea that you come out uh, during jagannath rath yatra because mahaprabhu will be there and you can take his darshan so he used to arrange jagannath rath yatra king pratap rudra because he is a king right but he he used to take up the menial service of wiping the broom uh, before jagannath walk so in jagannath rath yatra there is a culture when uh, jagannath before jagannath rath like goes a step forward we are brooming the the street and uh, showering the flower petals to welcome so he was doing he was brooming the street so mahaprabhu was very very happy in seeing this that he is the king but by his action he is not only setting an example but he is himself becoming a pure devotee so this is what krishna wants but then again work then we can say okay i can work i can do my office job i can do my um, terrorist job i can do my stealing job it's work it's work no i'm working i'm better than the person sitting in the jungle no this it is a skill who has to be working for who do i who do i work for work done as a sacrifice for which to has to be performed otherwise work causes bondage in this material world therefore o son of kunti perform your prescribed duties for his satisfaction and in that way you will always remain free from bondage So this is a very important word this chapter is very important first krishna arjuna is asking what to do we are telling me renounce work or work tell me one thing krishna says one who renounces the work but the senses are sitting or the mind is sitting with the sense object that person is false is a pretender then what to do work because work and but work for krishna work karma yoga perform karma yoga because by working in that way you will um, be actively engaged in the service and now he's saying what kind of work work done as a sacrifice to vishnu this is after the war of mahabharata yudhishthira maharaj uh, was going to perform uh, ashwamedh yagya so ashwamedh yagya and uh, and unanimously krishna was chosen as a benefactor of the sacrifice so he is taking instructions from narad muni Uh, as to how to serve krishna the best even though yudhishthira maharaj is the king he has taken the lowest position and he is asking narad muni how he can serve krishna this is the sign of an intelligence nowadays what happens if someone is sitting on a very high post let's say very high top, top most scientist okay and then they we say okay uh, my dear sir you are so intelligent kindly work for krishna whatever you are working uh, kindly please um, remember krishna chant hari krishna what is the answer we will get most likely what will be the answer uh, there is no god science there is science there is no god okay that's kali yuga but what is happening here that yudhishthira maharaj is the king of the whole world he is not the president or prime minister of one segment of the land no 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 he is the he is the king of the whole world and he is sitting and he wants to know how he can serve krishna top most position 
Why? Because he knows that if I work for Krishna, then that will be ultimate happiness, ultimate good for everyone. Okay, so I will give more examples. Now Krishna is going to start this. So work as a work done as a sacrifice for Vishnu has to be performed. How do we do it? Krishna gives example in this chapter. This is one example given. He says in this in this cycle of sacrifice, the uh, Krishna uh, gives rise to uh, Vedas, and Vedas are the book of knowledge, which have which tell us what is our prescribed duty. By performing our prescribed duty, we are performing a sacrifice because we are performing the prescribed duty. From the sacrifice comes the rain. From the rain comes the grain. Every living entity is subsisting on the grains. No one can live without grains. Everybody wants grains. Not the tires, not the coffee, the grain, the food. Everybody wants. When one get the grain, then offer it back to Krishna. So this completes and then take it. So he's again, he's saying that uh, Krishna gives rise to Vedas. Vedas are the book of knowledge, which tell us what is our prescribed duty, how we can work and not get entangled. And by performing the prescribed duty, that is called sacrifice. We are performing a sacrifice when we are performing the prescribed duty. And in this example, from the sacrifice, rain is produced. From the rain, grain is produced. And grain is nourishing to all living entities. And the grain, when it is produced, don't eat it like that. Offer to Krishna and complete the sacrifice. So it begins from Krishna, ends from Krishna. Where is our, who am I? I'm not enjoying or I'm not um, suffering. I'm just uh, there. So the, for this example, Krishna says, the devotees of the Lord are released from all kinds of sins because they eat food which is offered first for sacrifice. Others who prepare food for personal sense enjoyment verily eat only sin. So morsel after morsel of food, only sin is eaten. That is why it is very important. We may be saying that, oh, I have to eat because I'm a living entity, I need to eat. But Krishna says, if the food is not offered to me, and it is just eaten like that, then it is sinful. It's sin. Why it is sin? Well, there are so many sins. There are so many logics. When we uh, pluck the vegetables, so many living entities die. When we turn on the fire to cook, so many living entities die. When we turn on the water to wash the vegetables, so many of them die again. And when we are cooking, again, there's so many, so much killing is going on. This place is like that. So it is sin. We have to give account. But if we offer to Krishna, then Krishna makes it sanctified. And the, from the sanctified food, the memories, the memory of the brain is enhanced. The cells, uh, we, are, are, we get purified. And our duration of life increases so that we can practice Krishna consciousness. Such a simple thing. If someone knows how wonderful their life will become, Simple thing, use active senses to cook. Everybody is cooking or everybody is eating, but don't eat like that. You offer to Krishna because Krishna will absorb the sin and make the food sanctified and eat sanctified food and purify your existence. Yes, which child wants to chant this one? Mataji, Karati, Mataji, please see if someone raises their hand, you can unmute them. Is that okay with you, Mataji? Okay, Mataji. Arti Somyan. You can chant out. Sina Santo Yagna Sista Sina Santo Muchiante Sarva Kilbishaha. Bum jate te twagam papa ye pachyant atma karanat. Very nice. Thank you so much. So nice. So, all living entities subsist on food grains which are born, which are produced from rain. Rains are produced by performance of yagya, sacrifice, and yagya is born of prescribed duty. This is what I explained. Okay, so Krishna himself is saying in this. And what is the best yagya that is recommended for the age of Kali Yuga? What is the best yagya? 
यज्ञ संकीर्तन प्रेर यजंती ही सुमेत दशा तो श्रीमद भागवतम इलेवेंथ कैंटो फिफ्थ चैप्टर थर्टी सेकेंड वर्ष जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंदा श्री अद्वैत कदाधारा शिव सादि गौर भक्त वृंदा हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा राम राम हरे हरे सो यज्ञे संकीर्त ने प्रहे यजंती ही सुमेधशाह मेधा मीन्स वेरी गुड ब्रेन सुमेधा मीन्स स्पेशली गुड people who are performing this sankirtan yagya in the age of kali yuga are very very intelligent so this is again an intense chapter bhagavad gita 25th verse krishna says again yagne naam japo yagno asmi of all the yag of all the yagyas i am the chanting of the holy names so again jay shri krishna chaitanya prabhu nityananda shri advait gadadhar shiva sadhi gaur bhakti vrinda हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा राम राम हरे हरे सो देर फोर देर फोर विदाउट बींग अटैच टू द फ्रूट्स ऑफ एक्टिविटीज वन शुड एक्ट एज अ मैटर ऑफ ड्यूटी फॉर बाय वर्किंग विदाउट अटैचमेंट वन अटेन्स द सुप्रीम सो कृष्णा इज नाउ टेलिंग ही सेट ना वर्क डन एज अ सेक्रीफाइस ऑफ विष्णु हैज टू बी परफॉर्म अदरवाइज द वर्क कॉज इज बॉन्डेज बॉन्डेज मीन्स let's say that i do some business and i make lot of profit and then i get lot of money so so uh, okay now i have money so i have to enjoy or suffer for however the money is used because if i use the money for gambling or alcohol or something like that then i suffer with the same thing but if i use the money for something then i so call enjoy or let's say the other scenario is i start the business and i lose the business i'm going in loss so i suffer so either i enjoy or i suffer both things are bondage but we have to work in such a way that i am not i am transcendental to this how how is it possible by working for krishna do business for krishna krishna becomes the uh, enjoyer krishna becomes a proprietor and if we get the profit serve krishna with that profit if we don't get a profit then then go on and go on we have for krishna so uh, only spiritual master can reveal these secrets that's why we need a association of devotees the scriptures and the spiritual master who can train each one of us what to do sri shila prabhupad he is teaching everyone everybody is sitting and listening to what shila prabhupad is saying and shila prabhupad is not going to talk about what is the rate of the stock market or who has become the president of america today he is not going to talk about that he is he is going to talk about krishna and your relation with krishna my relation with krishna so you listen when you listen then you become krishna conscious that's it is so simple krishna consciousness is the most simple thing one can ever do actually who wants to chant this verse prashant and mute yourself i think he, yeah no hey krishna hare krishna प्रणाम कुरुते अनुवर्तते तत् तद एवतरो जनाहा स यत् परमामम कुरुते लोकस तद अनुवर्तते लेट्स अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट हैपेंस कृष्णा इज नाउ टेलिंग अर्जुन अदर एंगल दैट ओके लेट्स से दैट यू डोंट परफॉर्म दिस वर्क देन व्हाट हैपेंस दिस इज व्हाट इज हैपनिंग इन द रियल वर्ल्ड व्हाट एवर एक्शन इज परफॉर्म बाय अ ग्रेट मैन कॉमन मैन फॉलो इन हिज फुटस्टेप्स एंड व्हाट एवर स्टैंडर्ड्स ही सेट बाय एग्जेम्प्लरी एक्ट्स ऑल द वर्ल्ड परस्यूज so if you set an example of being a person who gets overwhelmed by emotions in more than the duty then you're setting an example for the rest of society to follow arjuna then because people are going to follow because everyone has a tendency to follow a role model so you're not being a role model good role model why because every don't do it by because whatever action is performed by a great man memorize this verse yad yad acharati shreshta tat tad evataro janaha whatever acharati shreshta means very uh, uh, influential men influential men or great men 
So, sir, yet pramanam kurute. You set an example. Pramanam kurute. Pramanam means example, evidence. Lokastad anuvartate. The whole world. Anu means following. Vartate. Everybody follows. Lokas, the whole world follows. Whatever action is performed by a great man, common men follow in his footsteps. And whatever standards is set by exemplary acts, all the world pursues. Then what happens? Okay, if someone is, let's say that uh, I am, let's say that there are two friends. One friend is trying to be very seriously Krishna conscious. Very seriously, he's chanting or she's chanting 16 rounds, following four regulatory principles, takes initiation, reads from part books. And, the, and then that friend has another friend who is not trying to be so Krishna conscious, whose goal of life is to work and take care of the family and uh, lead a simple normal life but there is and they think that work is worship you know so many people are there who think like that work is worship there is no need to worship god separate from work so work is worship so what should i do what should the person the friend who's trying to be a devotee do should that should that devotee judge the pass a judgment you are uh, useless your life is sinful because you're not trying to be krishna conscious is that what they should do? Bhagavad Gita teaches us how to talk to each other. Krishna says, no, don't do that. Krishna says, so as not to disrupt the minds of ignorant men attached to the fruitive results of prescribed duties, a learned man should not induce them to start up work. Rather, by working in the spirit of devotion, he should engage them in all sorts of activities for the gradual development of Krishna consciousness. So let's say that these are two people, right? One is the person who's climbing the coconut tree and another is the farmer who's tilling the wheat. So, and let's say that this person is a person that is trying to be Krishna conscious very seriously. So, and let's say this is the temple, uh, I'm sorry, the village leader. So he's not going to go around and say that stop working because you're not trying to become Krishna conscious. Your goal of life is to take care of family. That's not proper. No, 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 we don't do that. Okay, a leader will tell, very nice. You have such good tendency to work. You're such good in work. So good in working. You're so hard working. Do one thing. Can you please honor my request? This person, when he gets a very nice coconut tree, I'm sorry, coconut fruit, you come down the tree. Then when you open the coconut fruit, you get the water and the pulp. Then do one thing, offer to Krishna before you take it. Can you do that? Just do this much. Everything, then you sell, you enjoy money, that's fine, but you offer to Krishna before you even go out for sale, uh, sales. How difficult is that? Not at all. Is there any judgment passed? No. Is it practical? Yes. What is the problem? No problem. Right? So this person who is tilling the field, let's say that their aim is that I will get good profit from the grain and this year uh, and I will get uh, with the extra money that I'm going to get I will do these, 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 these things in my house. Okay, let them do it. Let them do it. Not to disrupt the mind of the ignorant. The learned should not induce them to stop work. Don't tell them to stop working. But tell them that, okay, you're going to get the grain. You're going to cook the grain. Offer to Krishna. Do something for Krishna. It's so important to do some simple, simple thing for Krishna. Because it helps us. But someone will not do it. Why will not do it? Why will they not do it? What is the barrier? Now we are going to talk about the barriers in the next two, three verses. The spirit soul, bewildered by the influence of false ego, thinks himself the doer of activities that are in actuality carried out by the three modes of material nature. Ahankara vimudhatma. Kartaham iti manyate. So ahankara means uh, false ego. Vimudhatma. So we mudha means uh, mad, specially mad. Mudha means mad. We mudha means specially mad. So uh, the spirit soul thinks that I am the doer. So because I'm the doer, I should be the enjoyer. You know, we hear that that there's so many people. I I used to have people friends like that uh, many years ago. That uh, they will say the whole week I have worked so hard. Today is Saturday. I'm just going to rest because I deserve it. I have, I have worked so hard. So immediately, 
not that we should not rest, but the, con but the consciousness has to change. So it's the matter of the consciousness, what's inside, not what's outside. So uh, Krishna says that the, how is the work done by one person? Let's analyze. Let's say that uh, someone is planting a mango tree. And then they work hard, they sow the seed in the soil, they water, and then they, if there are any uh, bugs, then they take care of it um, and they rear. And then uh, the mango fruit comes, but Krishna says, that's mine, give it to me. But the person may say that, how is it yours, Krishna? It's mine. I am the one working all the time to take care of the tree. Okay, but let's analyze. Actually, there are three doers. That's where I'm getting to. Let's analyze that, uh, first of all, the intelligence with which that person is working or the farmer is working. Who, who gave that intelligence? Krishna. Okay, then the, the seed that the farmer has. Who gave that seed? Krishna. The place where it is going to be planted. The earth, part of the earth. Who gave that? Who made it? Krishna. Okay, who made the water? Krishna. Who made the sun? Krishna. Who made the wind? Krishna. So how can I say that I am the one to enjoy? When our ingredients are supplied, that means we are not being gratitude. We are not being grateful. And that's called stay nevasa uchyate. Such a person is called thief only. Stay nevasa uchyate. Bhagavatam says that. So Krishna says that three doers, only a person who's bewildered will not be able to understand that they, that they are not the only doer. One doer is the living entity. Me, what, are, what do I do? I don't do anything other than desiring. I desire, I want to do it. Then second doer is super soul itself, which directs the material nature to bring the stuff in, front, in the presence. Like this person wants to plant a mango tree. First they think I want to do it. And Krishna arranges through the material nature, bring the seed, give the intelligence, give the part of the earth. And the third doer is Krishna in the sense that Krishna gives direction to the material nature to bring the ingredients so that my, my desire can be fulfilled. So there are three doers. But who, who must enjoy? Who must enjoy? Only Krishna. Bhuktaram Yaganatavasam Sarva Loka Maheshwaram. Even though there are three doers, but the enjoyer is only one. Krishna. You, you give it to Krishna, then you can enjoy through him. You can enjoy through him. That's fine. You know, there is a story. We can understand. Once the body parts of the body went on strike, they were very upset. The eyes, the nose, the ears, uh, the hands, the, the tongue, very upset with stomach. Very upset. Why? Because they say that we are, we are hunting, we are taking so many, the, and the eyes say, uh, I look for the food. The ears say, I hear where there is food or if the food is ready. The hands say, I fetch the food. The tongue say, I put the food, I taste the food, I chew the food. But who is the one enjoying? Stomach. We are on strike. We are going on strike. This is too much. Stomach is asking for too much. How can stomach be the only enjoyer? So everybody went on strike because I wanted to enjoy the separate um, nose. I'm sorry, the tongue wanted to enjoy on its own. Hands wanted to enjoy on their own. So what happened eventually? The food didn't go in the stomach. Then what happened? All the senses grew weak. Similarly, if we try to enjoy without putting Krishna in the center of our life, we will actually just go weak and weak and weak. Day by day by day, it will just, the life will become meaningless. That is why we see so much depression actually. We see so much um, the old people, they work all life, right? They, they work, I have seen so many. They work all life. But at the end of, towards the end of life or towards the ripe age, they see who did I work for? Who was I working for all this life? What, who, who do I belong to? So these things happen because there's no Krishna. And if you have Krishna from the get-go, then you know, it's clear, pakka, pura clear. It's clear that I was working for Krishna. I'm working for Krishna. I will continue to work for Krishna. So now Arjuna is going to ask a very relevant question. Krishna, now you told me that, okay, work and work for Vishnu and work for Vishnu because that is going to be a sacrifice. And if I do a sacrifice, then I don't get bonded by the work. Uh, in, in fact, I get happiness, ultimate happiness. But Arjuna is asking, what is the barrier? 
or descendant of Vrishni, by what is one impelled to sinful acts, even unwillingly, as if engaged by force? So we can take this sinful act. Like Krishna says, verily eats only sin. You know, people who are not offering food to Krishna, verily eat only sin. I just told you. So the sinful act doesn't really have to be like uh, for others. We all can introspect at this point. That what am I doing where I'm not putting Krishna in my life? What am I doing? We'll be able to see. So sinful act can be as simple as cooking food and not offering to Krishna is sinful. Now Arjuna is asking, why is one impelled to do this? Even though unwillingly, as if engaged by force. Anicham, palat, two words are used. Anicham means without desiring and palat means as if forced. So Krishna answers in this verse. Any child wants to chant, this is a very nice verse. It's a very nice answer and um, very nice verse. Yes, any child wants to chant this verse? Viva unmute. Viva, Kalati Mataji is asking you to unmute. Yes, you can. You're unmuted. Dhu you can... mena vriyate vahanir yatha darso malenaka yatol bena vratto garbhas tatha te tenedam avratam. Very nice. Thank you so much. So Krishna says it is lust only Arjuna which covers the intelligence. And he gives three examples. He gives the lust is covering uh, as if the, the maybe we'll start from here, we'll go anti clockwise, okay? That a child, the covering of the lust in one's consciousness is compared to three things in this verse. One example is as if an embryo is covered by the womb. That covering is very thick. You know, an embryo is cover, compared to a living entity, and the womb is compared to the, the lust. So that covering is very thick. That person, that Living entity cannot do anything because the covering, the consciousness is so covered. And that is equivalent to the life of plants. If you go and tell a tree, become Krishna conscious. Actually, if you sing Hare Krishna to the trees, they also become conscious, but um, they also get benefited. But they cannot speak Bhagavad Gita like you can speak or they cannot read, right? So the, because, because that living entity was sinful in some lifetime. Um, so this is the result Krishna gives that. And the other example is the dust uh, which is covering the mirror. So dust which is covering the mirror, if you ever have seen a very old mirror which is covered with dust, it's very hard to rub it off, very, very hard. I have tried it in my grandma's house. You spray different things and you do try to do it, it doesn't come off. That consciousness is covered to the animal life. That it is possible, but it is very hard for an animal, again, but it's better than the plant life. And the smoke, which is covered by, uh, which is covering the fire. The, sm the fire uh, can be uncovered by the smoke, but there's this thick cloud of smoke around the fire. This is compared to the human life. The human being has this spark of uh, spirituality or Krishna consciousness inside, but it's just covered by so many other things. It is easy to get rid of the smoke and have the spark shine or the fire come out completely. So these are the different degrees of lust. A fi as fire is covered by smoke, mirror is covered by dust, embryo is covered by womb. Similarly, the living entity is covered by different degrees of this lust. And Krishna says, again, the same verse that I said, the mirror on the dust is compared to animal life. The embryo in the womb is compared to the plant life. And the smoke uh, around the fire is compared to the human life different degrees of lust. Therefore, O Arjuna, best of the Bhartas, in the very beginning, curb this great symbol of sin, lust, by regulating the senses and slay this destroyer of knowledge and self-realization. I actually like to ponder here, what is the meaning of this when Krishna says, in the very beginning, curb this great symbol of lust? This is from yesterday. Uh, very quickly tell me, we have only uh, two, three more slides left. So what is the meaning of this when Krishna says, in the very beginning curb this great symbol of uh, sin, lust? What does it mean? Vishnu Vasudevan. 
Mata Jim, sorry. Uh, Hare Krishna, Mata Ji. In the very beginning means in your childhood, uh, when your intellect is sharp, not at your old age. Okay, thank you. That's one way of understanding. Thank you. Uh, so, yes, Sita Mata Ji, go ahead. I think here they're talking about just when the thought of doing something wrong comes, you should curb it right at that point. Yes, thank you so much. Yes. That's what Krishna means. Remember yesterday we read Dhyayate Vishyanupunsaha Sangasta Sanjayate. Dhyayate Vishyanupunsaha. Dhyayate contemplating the objects of senses. That beginning. Just curb it there only. Yes, Krishna consciousness has to be cultivated from childhood. What happens is that if a, if someone is cultivating Krishna consciousness from the childhood, then the innocence is preserved. You know, they don't, um, they already develop higher taste from the very beginning of life. So they have a less chance of getting here and there, but still there is a chance. And that beginning goes to the beginning of when I start contemplating. You know, I saw this sari on the TV that actress was wearing. I need it. I want, I want. So there, Okay, open the closet, 500 sizes are already hanging, but one more I want. That beginning want has to be curbed by intelligence. How will we do it? This is what I'm going to explain. This is how a, a living entity works. Okay, somebody is on a bodily platform. The next verse is, uh, Krishna is saying that uh, working senses are better than the uh, mind. And uh, the working senses are better. But but higher than the working senses is the intelligence. And higher than the intelligence is the soul. So there are different people and different levels of consciousness. Let's see. This will come again. This slide will come again later. Someone who's on the bodily platform, they're very convinced that I'm the body. And the only aim of my life is to enjoy. By hook or crook, I have to enjoy. So that particular living entity will not hesitate to go in, uh, let's say, uh, liquor house even in the middle of the day you know, because the aim of the life is to enjoy the senses so whatever it takes enjoy that's a bodily platform but the person who is more advanced is on a sensual platform sensual platform is another area where the living entity wants to enjoy that is why there is always uh, moroseness there is always hankering and lamentation but there is some concept that I need to work you know, it's in the middle of the day. I can't just go in a liquor house. So let's say that Namanisha will give this example. Let's say that uh, there's a liquor house and then there's a juice station, the juice shop. Both are side by side. So this person, the central platform, because they have a concept that I, I have to work Monday to Friday. Saturday, I will go to the bar. But Monday to Friday, I have to work. So that person, even though want to go to that place, they will still go to the juice house in the middle of the day. But from the corner of the eye, they will look, that when will I go there? Because their aim is also to enjoy the senses, uh, but they're working. Higher than that is a mental platform. That is our philosophers or uh, speculators. That who am I? Uh, the senses, after enjoying so much, I'm not satisfied. Maybe I mind. So such people are attached to reading uh, classical uh, fiction or classical work and classical music but higher than that is an intellectual platform that person becomes inquisitive that uh, am i my mind am i body am i senses who am i the answer is not there yet but they're genuinely uh, genuinely intellectual genuinely searching and that is a gyani platform they're in search of the knowledge uh, that who am i the real knowledge of the self and on the top is a spiritual platform. A person who is situated on the uh, spiritual uh, concept of life. Then I am a part and parcel of Krishna. I'm not the mind. I'm not the body. I'm not the intelligence. I am spirit soul. And if I am spirit soul, then who is my source? The supreme soul. Who, who is supreme soul? Krishna. So when they get situated in that, Sita Dhir Muni, the consciousness is fixed in transcendence. Then the real happiness comes. That's Chitananda. Okay, so again, so this is the verse. Indriyani parani ahur, indriyabe param manaha, manastu para buddhi, yo buddhe parastasu saha. The working senses are superior to dull matter. 
mind is higher than the senses intelligence is still higher than the mind and he the soul is even higher than the intelligence so first comes the dull matter person doesn't want to work but higher than the um, dull matter is the uh, mind is higher than the senses then higher than the mental platform is the intellectual platform but highest is the spiritual platform krishna himself is saying so here the horses are representing the five knowledge acquiring senses we acquire knowledge by vision we acquire knowledge by smell we acquire knowledge by hearing we acquire knowledge by touch and by taste so these are these horses are representing the five knowledge acquiring senses but they are so hey why are they are going here there why are they going here there because the bridle which is controlling them is uncontrolled see mind is uncontrolled mind says go there turn on the tv watch that this this some people can't decide what what they want to watch flip constant or the social media does is not does not do any good either because you can just go on flapping 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 why because the mind is uncontrolled don't know where to fix what is the object what do i want go here go there go there that's not that how how will that person become sita dhir muni and why is mind going here and there because the intelligence is not fixed and who is this person sitting on the on the carriage the soul the self soul does nothing if the intelligence is higher than the mind and mind is higher than the senses but if the mind is uncontrolled the senses are going here and there and the intelligence is also weak okay so this is what we did today this is a very nice chapter the chapter begins with uh, arjuna asking krishna what do I, what should i do tajekam vada tell me one thing krishna should i renounce or should i act krishna says don't become mithyachara don't become like a pretender uh, because work because working is better than just sitting and meditating but work as nishkam karma yoga nishkam nishkam means no desire to enjoy do the work do the work but no desire to enjoy the work then who becomes the enjoyer yoga do it as a yoga as a sacrifice to krishna niyatam kuru karma then krishna says karma kan to karma yoga you know i gave example that there are some people who uh, don't want to who are not inclined towards krishna consciousness but a person who is superior can engage them in some activity i gave example of a farmer tilling the field to grow grain and the grains come tell them offer grain to krishna then you can do whatever you want and then arjuna is told by krishna that if you uh, don't work then you are actually not setting a good example for the society yadi yad acharati shreshtha work because you will set a good example for the society then arjuna ask what is it that causes us to do the sinful act as if a uh, forced without as if i don't want anicham i, I don't desire but balad i'm forced krishna says the greatest enemy is the lust iha verinam and uh, we discuss the three coverings of lust the as the embryo is covered by a womb or the lust is covering the mirror or uh, the fire is covering the smoke these are the three degrees okay again um, this is my email some people were asking can we please uh, put this email in the chats everywhere ujenglish20@gmail.com and i hope you all are taking quizzes i want to quickly show one prabhupad lecture it's not very big But this is in Melbourne. The Prabhupada is uh, giving this class, not class. So I'm giving the independence. Now, whatever you like, you can do. Krishna never forced him to accept the teachings of Bhagavad Gita. He gave him the independence. Now, whatever you like, you can do. And he agreed. Yes. Now my illusion is over. I shall lack, as you say. The same in the morning. Yeah. Mm. <coughs> This is in the eighteenth chapter. Thus I have explained to you the most what he says. Yeah. Iti te jnam akyatam guya guya taram maya. ಅಶೇಷೇನ 
now, if you say, why this whole should be, should become so foolish? So that is the misuse of independence. A, a, a intelligent father has got intelligent son, but sometimes he becomes a fool. So what is the reason that the, he is this part and parcel of the father? He should have become exactly like the father, but he does not become like the father. I have said in uh, Allahabad, as a big lawyer, barrister, Mr. Banerjee, his eldest son was also a barrister, and his youngest son, on account of bad association, he became a kawala. A kawala means uh, in India, there is a carriage drawn by one horse. So, he likes to be in a kala. Uh, that means he, he fell in love with a low-class woman and by her association he became an ekala. There are many instances. Therefore, it is the duty of the human being how to control the mind not act like cats and dogs. That is human being. You should be inquisitive. Why uh, this happening? Why this happening? And it should take education. That is human life. And if he does not inquire, if he does not take education, then what is the difference between him and the dog? He remains a dog. He has got this opportunity of human life. He should take advantage of understanding what is what. Not to keep himself in the dog status. Simply eating, sleeping, sex life and defending. That is the distinction between dog and human being. If he does not become inquisitive, how to control the mind? He is not even human being. And dog never inquires. And dog, dog knows that when I bark, people become disturbed. He never asks how to control this barking habit. <laughs> because he is dog. He cannot do that. A human being, people hates me, I do some, something wrong, I have to control my mind. That is human. That is the difference between human being and dog. Therefore, Vedic injunction is go and inquire. You have got this human form of life. Atata Brahma Jigyasa. Now, this is the time for inquiring about the soul. Tadvi Gana Thansa Guru Meva Aviyache. If you want to understand this science, then go to proper Guru and take lessons from him. The same thing as we instruct our children, if you want to be educated in the higher status of life, go to school, go to college, take lessons. That is human society. The dog's father will never ask the dog, child, go to school. No, they are dogs. Hey, so for 10 minutes, I'll make the breakout room. Uh, Kalavati Mataji, Kartik Prabhu, yes, Rashmi, Sita Mataji. Yes. So please check on each other uh, as usual. So you all are not in the same room. Rashmi, you're going to have your own room, okay? Hi, Krishna. So I'll call everyone back in 10 minutes. So you
Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Mata Ji. Hare oh, Krishna, Mata Ji. You are in the same room, right? Uh, shall uh, let me go to the other room? Okay. Sure, Prabhu. This is room three, right? Okay. Yes, Prabhu. I think I see Kalavati Mata Ji yeah. also here. Okay, let me go to room room two then. Room one. Okay. Sure. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, everyone. Hare Krishna, Mataji. Hare Krishna, yeah. Hare Krishna, this is Karthik here. Yeah, you, you, can you please go ahead with your question one by one, please? Yeah, yeah. Well, beyond the quiz one, we are not going able to go to quiz two. So, what can be the reason? Yeah, you can ask quiz related questions. You can ask uh, to Mataji towards the end of this class. She she told uh, she will show. So you can ask her. So you you'll okay, be then. yeah you will be going back to the main room. That time you can ask her. Okay, okay, thank you. Prashant uh, Prabhu H S. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna Prabhu. Uh, yes, yes, Prabhu. Yeah. Uh, Prabhu, my name is not uh, Prashant. My name is Rishikesh Prabhu. Yeah, you can rename to Rishikesh then. It is coming as Prashant. This is my father's, no, this is my father's phone, Prabhu. Okay. Yeah, whatever is displaying there, that name only I can call, right? I don't know. <laughs> it's okay, Prabhu. Prabhu, I have a doubt. Yeah, please go ahead. Uh, Pra Prabhu, in, in the chapter 3, uh, the Krishna has said Karthi in... Prabhu ji. Uh, yes, Mataji. Even I came to the same room. Oh, just now I came here. Should I go again? You are going to take this one? I will leave you again. I'll, I'll go then. No problem. You you please take care, Mataji, oh. then. Okay. Yeah. Properly or not doing justice to, to the this. Then the food, which means the uh, how does my uh, work become a sacrifice there? Hare Krishna. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank Hare you. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Does anybody else have a question? I don't see any raised hands. Room. Hare Krishna. Yeah, this Karthik here. Is there anyone, any co host in this room yet? No, Prabhu, it's only you. Yeah, just now I, yeah, I came here because I was, I was in another room. Okay, you, you can go ahead with your question now. Okay. Um, I have a question uh, regarding offering our food to Krishna, offering uh, our work to Krishna. So okay. how is that? Um, uh, is that, does it mean literally offering food to Krishna as in prasadam or is it some other way? Thank you. Yeah, actually Ma Mataji will be sharing the uh, mantras for offering food to Krishna that we will send in all groups. But offering means like um, the food itself is Krishna only. So we are not offering food to Krishna. The food we consume itself is Krishna only, Krishna's form only. So, and uh, since we are uh, offering the food to Krishna, we are uh, allowed to offer only uh, sattvic foods like uh, onion, garlic, we don't offer and uh, pure vegetarian food only we offer to Krishna. So that is also there. And uh, apart from that, whatever we food we consume, so that uh, that is going to be offered before Krishna. So uh, whether you can offer to Krishna's photo or uh, the idol, whatever you are having in your uh, puja room, the Krishna's idol, that itself is Krishna Vigraha, that itself is Krishna only. So there is no difference between Krishna himself and the uh, photo or uh, idol that you are using. So that itself is Krishna only. So we, when while we are cooking for Krishna, we should uh, think always like we are cooking for Krishna and we are doing, uh, doing the things for Krishna. And uh, with that thinking itself, we should uh, do the 
cooking and offering so once we start consuming the food that is offered to krishna then slowly slowly the rajasik and tamasik uh, things will go away from us because krishna is suddha shatva uh, like uh, krishna is the uh, above all the three gunas so the three gunas is sattva rajas and tamas so uh, basically the this material nature is considered of sattva combination of mixture of all these three things sattva rajas and tamas so that's why we are having all the uh, uh perplexions here the problems in this world so once we start offering uh, food to krishna the, the, it is above the three three modes of nature that is shuddha sattva shuddha sattva is above all the sattvic is uh, out of the three modes sattvic is the highest and above sattvic is shuddha sattva so th that is uh, that is the um, speciality about offering food to krishna thank you and what about offering our work to krishna how is that offering work means like uh, as mata ji told in today's class like we need to do do the work so we should be doing the work we should we cannot avoid the work but but uh, we should uh, offer the results like we don't uh, keep uh, the um, we don't look for the results actually without looking for the results results of the work we should just uh, do our work only the karma we do without getting attached to the work that is what they are coming to say like we don't overdo anything or just for the sake of doing we do and we uh, uh, it is always advised like if you if, if you can uh, uh, add krishna everywhere like you can have a, a krishna's photo or you can think about krishna and keep doing your work if that is possible so uh, whatever we are doing in this material uh, world is for the sake of uh, gaining money right maybe that is one of the reason but uh, working for krishna is nothing to do with money actually so money is uh, not uh, going to uh, help anyway in uh, krishna consciousness so that is the, let that be, let that be there we can't uh, avoid getting the money but we should add krishna in whatever we are doing so that is what we are coming to say okay thank you hare krishna prabhu ji hare krishna prabhu uh, prabhu ji just uh, i want to inquire one query regarding some um, work is worship actually work is was when i visited one site of uh, army or uh, uh, personnel uh, the, then um, uh, the black letter written work is worship but now at part the chapter 3 work is not having so important as where the as the uh, we have to surrender with with the krishna that is better there is no meaning for getting the money as well as we are uh, having some lust regarding this uh, earning of the money and uh, involving different activities which is raj yoga so kindly express some light on this view because work is keep set aside by this uh, chapter 3 no no okay. we are not uh, the meaning is not like you should keep the work aside and don't concentrate on the work not that actually see as you said like army is an important uh, uh, thing for a uh, country's safety so definitely we should uh, do our work so the duty is important but uh, we should not keep doing the duty uh, overdo the overdo our concentration so much into the duty so that we forget krishna totally so that's that's the motto like uh, you 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 have to do you have to earn for your life that is definitely there but if you overdo that if you keep on thinking about work and uh, work related materialistic things do those things will not lead you to krishna consciousness in any way that's what we are coming to say you do your work but you keep keep uh, thinking about krishna also while doing the work as much as possible prabhu ji if we work so then we can gain some money we can gain come some money then definitely our intention will go towards the worldly affairs and then so you have to you have to earn the... money only for that is required for you to uh, suf, that is sufficient for you so you should not work too much for earning accumulate so much of money so don't uh, spend your time accumulating so much of money whatever is required for running your life that is sufficient right more than that why we should uh, strain ourselves and uh, overdo things so did you get um, uh, the point like overdoing things or overworking that is not required only required for our uh, running our life that is there but if the if depend on the individual if somebody can earn within one hour two hour lot of money 
but what is the utility of that if he is not having the krishna consciousness so what is the utility of that money so if he's not having the krishna consciousness then he will come back and again uh, get into the materialistic world and uh, get some other life so that is what is going to happen so that, so that is up to the individual yes that is up to the individual but he if he is designing is if it is going to decide that i am not going to krishna consciousness then he will come on in in this world only again and again take birth he will not get 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 the liberation that is what is going to happen actually so that means from the very instantly originally we have to leave even each and everything and we have to balance our life as per the krishna consciousness yeah we should not leave anything actually we should we will share um we will share the link sita mata ji any question left unanswered there was just one question mata ji and i didn't know how to answer like i think uh, uma mata ji was saying that during uh, krishna jayanti uh, they say that it's because krishna was born in midnight if if it makes uh, diff, uh, if it is beneficial to chant during midnight i said usually uh, what i've learned is you brahma murta is the better time but you can chant any time that you want only on the krishna janmashtami day particularly no i think she said she referenced that but said uh, do we chant at midnight i was like i don't know how to answer that mata ji please uh, tell mata ji so i am understanding you are asking that because krishna was born at midnight so let's chant hari krishna at midnight and not the rest of the day not like that mata ji you eat midnight Twelve o'clock, you born, no? So at that time, I feel somewhat. I I get some instinction of chanting him his name. So that's what I am doing. One one mala at that time. So I have started two malas now at that time only. So I don't know whether that is true, correct or false. I don't know anything. But I am doing that at twelve o'clock only. I don't know whether it is correct or not. So so I wanted to make it clear, ma'am, Mata Ji. You are very innocent, ha? Huh? I uh, Prabhu doesn't say on Janmash to me. Uh, at midnight we have a, a mahabishe and we have a, a lot of chanting and particularly on the janmashtami day but on the rest of the days first of all there is no restriction you can chant whenever you get time okay mataji but propa said the recommendation is chant early in the morning before but mm -hmm. half hours before sunrise at 12 o'clock when it drinks i get something so i get <laughs> i don't i start chanting so why it's happening i don't know just so <laughs> nice ask mother ji thank you sir thank you hare krishna hare krishna kartik prabhu do you any question left unanswered Yeah, actually, I tried answering that question, Mata Ji. They were asking about like work is work is worship. So, uh, um, what what okay. what will happen if I do the work and I don't uh, engage? If some person is not engaging in Krishna consciousness, and uh, so I just tried answering them. It's not overdo anything. Just uh, accumulate wealth only for that. That is required for running their life, and uh, we should uh, add Krishna in everything. Like you should keep Krishna consciousness in you. Okay. Okay. If the if the if the person was satisfied with your answer, I'm okay. Uh, okay. Thank you, Prabhu. Rashmi Rajesh Mataji, where did you disappear? I saw that you were here. R M. Hare Krishna. R M. Can I meet you, sir? Hare Krishna, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Roshan. Yes, Mataji. Mataji, I have a question, Mataji. Yes, please go ahead, Roshan. Mataji, as you show showed the picture. and uh, you told that uh, it is uh, karma yoga right that uh, right. we offer to uh, anything we offer to krishna is karma yoga and it doesn't become karma kand if it is done for krishna yes yes so is it called as bhakti yoga or karma yoga i was asking about it mata ji so that is um, out of the scope question right now so out of the syllabus the krishna is building bhagavad gita It's a nice question. He's asking a very intellectual question. It's a nice question because he has read Bhagavad Gita multiple times now. So Krishna is building Bhagavad Gita. Third chapter is he's introducing the concept of Karma Yoga. Fourth chapter he'll introduce the concept of Gyan Yoga. Then fifth chapter again Karma Yoga will come. Sixth chapter Ashtang Yoga, and then the middle six are the ones that talk about pure bhakti. Um, Roshan, everybody is not surrendering to Krishna with the same intensity. Okay, everyone is going to Krishna uh, with the preconceived notion. 
we are not going to Krishna. Oh, Krishna, here I am. And I am Krishna says, Sarva Dharma Parityajja Maame Kam Sharnam Raja. Leave everything. Surrender unto me. Aham Tvam Sarva Pape Bhyo Moksha Shami Mastu Cha. And then don't fear, I will do. Simple instruction. How many of us are able to do it? No. Then Krishna gives us this way, that way. Leave it. Karma Yoga is also of two kinds. Do you know that? Roshan. What are the two types of Karma Yoga? Okay. Um, I have heard that uh, Karma Yoga are of two types. Yes, Mataji. So I forgot the name. Like uh, sitting and uh, meditating on Lord and uh, other one is like working and doing something. Sitting and meditating on Lord is Ashtang Yoga or Jnana Yoga. So Karma Yoga, which are the two types, is one is called as Sakam Karma Yoga and another is called as Nishkam Karma Yoga. Sakam Karma Yoga means that Sakam. Kama means fruit enjoy, and Sa means enjoying the fruit. So that person may also serve Krishna from the periphery. Let's say that someone is working uh, in an office and they are earning money. Srila Prabhupada said 50% of the earnings should go to Krishna consciousness. The rest of the 50% you can keep. 50% go to Krishna consciousness. But if someone is not able to do it, then they give some donation. Like they, we must give. Some donation is given to run Krishna conscious, uh, propag uh, to propagate Krishna consciousness across the world. So let's say 10%. But because I want to still keep 90% for myself, I will give 10% to Krishna. Good, good so that is that person attached to their work. That is called, but they are serving Krishna with something that is called Sakam Karma Yoga. Nishkam Karma Yoga is what six chapter first verse describes. An Ashrita Karma Palam Karyam Karma Karoti Yaha. Yaha Saha Sanyasi Cha Yogi Cha Na Niragne Na Cha Akriya. So An Ashrita Karma Palam. An Ashrita. Ashrita means shelter. An Ashrita. Do not take shelter. Of what? Karma phalam. Do not take shelter of the fruit of activity. Karyam karma karoti saha. One who does the work but does not take shelter of the fruit. That person is a yogi. That person is a devotee and not the person who lights no fire. So that's nishkam karma yoga. So nishkam karma yoga can be called as devotional service. Sakam karma yoga is somewhat going there. Somewhat in the step ladder. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, Anvaya Mataji, you can unmute yourself, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Mataji, uh, someone asked that, uh, can I do chanting midnight 12 o'clock? Yeah, I answered. Yeah, yeah. So I just wanted to uh, say that uh, it is like all the Acharyas, they, uh, the spiritual masters will tell you to uh, get up during the time of Brahma Murta. Morning. Being four to six, they say, is a very good time for chanting. Now, the actual reason uh, behind is, you could say scientific reason or, you know, a uh, uh, more practical reason behind that is, in the morning, your sattva gun is predominant. Mm -hmm. Brahma murta. And it is your practice gives immense results. Immense. Immense is the word. You cannot even count it. If you're doing the chanting at the time of Brahma Murta, if even it's not possible to do two hours of chanting, uh, the entire Brahma Murta, three hours as per you, get up at least 10 minutes, they say you must do the chanting uh, at the time of Brahma Murta. So uh, as you proceed throughout the day, then you get busy with your work or other activities and your Rajogun predominates and towards uh, the evening and uh, the later part of the evening uh, say 8, 9 o'clock at night, it is a tamogun which predominates so it is the sadhana best done is during the Brahma Murta though uh, the uh, chanting of the name, uh, there is no time you know this uh, Haridas Thakur Namacharya was doing it throughout the day. Thank you, Mataji. Thank you so much. Mataji, Kartik here. Hare Krishna. Yes, Kartik. Yeah, I'm getting so many private chats regarding the quiz, Mataji. I don't know. Yeah. I, could, I couldn't answer uh, anything because I don't have any idea about that. 
even now yes. someone is someone is asking now also <laughs> privately the, I, right now they they can only chat with me if you have logged no, no. in through no in whatsapp so in whatsapp they are asking me privately so many chats i am getting i don't i don't know what to say but because i don't have any idea about the technical thing about the quiz so i just forwarded i forwarded whatever you you have asked to forward that's all okay thank you yeah that's a that so kartik prabhu is not the point of contact person for quiz he's not he's he he's not the he's just helping me to forward the messages the we have already given for frequently asked questions already we will ask forward one more time today but if you are still facing some problem then you have to email it to me Do, please don't write privately to kartik prabhu it's not going to help because <laughs> He's not going to be able to do it, and I know that he's he's helping me. Jai Shri Krishna, Madam. Uh, I wanted to uh, download the Bhagavad Gita. Yesterday, when you showed it, it was too fast, and I could not uh, uh, monitor that in my phone. Prabhu, it's very simple. You just have to go to uh, the temple website. You see, it's called Mangaluru. You see that? Okay, it's called Mangaluru. Huh. the website you'll be able to explore okay mangaluru i thought it was bangalore yesterday you did program right this is mangaluru.com fine 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 now i understand then bhajans and free resources and then in the already got it shishi radha govinda mandir is gone yeah. and then you go down okay kundan okay. swat sudha mukundan sudha krishna ah. Yes, Madam uh, Hare Krishna Mata Ji. There's nothing about the doubt. I told you I rejoined again. I was not able to uh, attempt the quizzes. But what I did was I logged out from the previous session, and then I took a different email ID, and uh, I'm able to attend uh, all the quizzes. So Kartik Prabhu asked me to share my experience. Experience with clients, so that others can also be benefited. I I logged out from the older group, and they put an enrolled again. And am I able to attend attend all the quizzes? So it can benefit somewhere all of them who are not able to do it. So I thought of sharing it with you, Mata. Thank you very much, Shantu Ji. I'm very very honored. Thank you. Thank you. What is the right age to Bhagavad Gita? Yeah, uh, right age of Bhagavad Gita is start from five years of age. Prabhat says when a child is five years start scriptures. When they nine years, they can start fasting. Uh, so five years is the age. They can do. I know some mothers whose children they start they start chanting shlokas. So then when they start speaking, the first thing they say is the shlokas because the mother has been telling the shlokas to children. when they were very very young i know one mother like that uh, okay thank you everyone for coming um uh, thank you my co-host